Hi, my name is James, and in the next several minutes, I'm going to share with you a surprising and kind of strange success story. It's about how I finally lost every last bit of my unwanted weight after years of yo-yo dieting and bitter disappointments. And I'm sharing this story with you because it's probably similar to your own. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, young or old. If you've ever struggled with your weight or felt self-conscious about your body, you're sure to relate. And by the end of this short presentation, which won't be online for long, not only will I share my amazing story, I'll actually reveal to you the most overlooked secret when it comes to weight loss. The same secret I accidentally discovered which helped me shed over 36 pounds of ugly fat and kept off till this very day. Now, before we get started, there's a few things you should know about me. I'm not a doctor, nutritionist, or some kind of health practitioner, and I don't have any fancy letters after my name. I'm just a regular guy with average genetics who, over the years, developed somewhat of a weight problem. The funny thing is, I was actually skinny growing up, but by my early 20s things started to change. The days of eating whatever I wanted without second thought were long gone. The weight slowly started creeping on, and fast forward 15 years later and I was carrying an extra 40 pounds of fat. Now don't get me wrong, I didn't just let this happen, in fact, I fought it every step of the way. I'd go on whatever fat diet was in fashion at least twice a year, and on occasion hit the gym pretty hard. And sure, I'd lose a little weight. 5 pounds here, 5 pounds there, but after a few weeks I'd get tired of my routine and fall off the wagon. I'd get so down on myself for not sticking with it, but I'd always make up some excuse for not following through, then plan to start again the next week. Of course, that next week came and went and I didn't do a thing, or the week after that. As you can imagine, I'd gain back every ounce I lost and then some. And even though I'd be frustrated, oddly enough, deep down inside I still felt somewhat in control. If push came to shove, I was confident I could drop the pounds. That is, until my last dieting attempt. To this day, I remember it vividly. It was early May and spring was in full bloom. The weather was gorgeous. Blue sunny skies, the smell of flowers and freshly cut grass in the air, and the constant buzzing of lawnmowers as people tended to their yards. Summer could not get here soon enough. But that meant swapping sweatshirts for t-shirts. And as you probably know, t-shirts don't do such a good job of hiding an overgrown belly. Unless, of course, you opt for one so big it makes you look like you're wearing an oversized potato sack. In fact, I hated the way clothes hung over my stomach, never really resting on my pants because my big gut would get in the way. What's worse was when I try and hide it. I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, but every time a pretty woman would buck by me in the street, I'd suck in my belly and hold my breath. Of course, the only thing that accomplished was to make me even more self-conscious. Sitting was another story altogether. My shirt would hug my waist and split my stomach into two rolls. I always felt that people were staring at me, especially when I'd be eating in a restaurant. Sure, I might not have been the biggest person in the room, but I definitely felt like it. And I won't even go into bending over to tie my shoes or avoiding the mirror before stepping in the shower. Let's just say those were tough moments for my self-esteem. I'm sure you get the picture. So, like all the other years around this time, I decided to get in shape. But with summer fast approaching, I wasn't about to take a chance on some fad diet. Instead, I would stick to a tried and true method, calorie counting and portion control. My plan was to eat 500 fewer calories daily and hit the gym six times a week. That way, I'd lose about two pounds every seven days. The first week went by and nothing. I still weighed the same. I was a bit disappointed but didn't think much of it. I figured my body just needed some more time to adjust to the new routine. But next week came and still not an ounce lost. By the third week, I was actually scared to step on the scale, and for a good reason. After 21 days of weighing food, eating six small meals a day, keeping a journal, and, not to mention, sweating like a pig on the treadmill, all I had to show for it was one measly pound. Can you believe it? But it gets worse, because I spent the next nine weeks losing and regaining the same four pounds. It's as if my metabolism had grinded to a halt. And after three agonizing months of spinning my wheels, I simply gave up. Remember that confidence I mentioned earlier? Instantly vanished into thin air. I never felt more hopeless about my weight and my health than at that exact moment. I was so devastated, I spent an entire weekend stuffing my face. I ate everything I had shunned on my diet. Pizza, ice cream, chocolate cake, potato chips, Oreos, bacon cheeseburgers, you name it. And after feasting to the point of disgust, I decided to stop feeling sorry for myself and take serious action because I knew that this was the point of no return. I could no longer ignore the cold hard truth staring me right in the face. 
I wasn't in control of my weight, and I hadn't been since my early 20s. There was no more room for excuses. I couldn't put this off for another day when the time would be just right, the way I had done for years and years. In fact, if I didn't do something about it at once, I was destined to get fatter and fatter until it eventually killed me. Oh, here's where I should mention the diabetes and heart disease run in my family, so you can imagine just how bleak my future looked if I didn't change my ways and fast. So, I started looking for solutions. I went on to read at least 15 different diet books. I scoured the web endlessly, looking for something, anything that would point me in the right direction. And I also talked to anyone who'd listen. But the advice was basically the same. Eat less and exercise more. The exact things that clearly weren't working for me. Now, I might not be the smartest bird in the flock, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that maybe, just maybe that wasn't the best approach. At least not for someone whose metabolism was obviously shot from years and years of yo-yo dieting. I was literally at the end of my rope. Honestly, I have no idea what kept me going, but I'm glad I did, because shortly after, I stumbled onto a secret that was so embarrassingly simple, I figured it couldn't possibly work. But imagine my surprise when it did. In fact, it worked so well that I went on to lose six pounds in the very first week. That's more than I had lost in the past three months combined, on a strict diet, no less. And you know what? I was terrified. Why? Because my last attempt left me so traumatized, I was convinced this was a fluke. But lo and behold, the second week went by and I was down another three pounds. And this kept going and going that by the 10th week, I had lost a total of 36 pounds in all the right places. I had to buy a whole new set of clothes, but I still kept a few of my old ones just to remind me of how far I had let myself go and where I never wanted to end up again. For instance, before this total body transformation, my pants were splitting at the seams. Now, after dropping six full sizes, I was literally swimming in them. And without anything to push them out, my new shirts fell flat against my body. As for my old ones, well, let's just say they made me look like a little boy who decided to dress up like his dad. And while I'm not the type to top my own horn, for the first time in years, I really look good. But that paled in comparison to how I felt. Words can't really describe the amazing feeling of putting on jeans I hadn't worn in years, but still kept tucked away in the back of my closet in hopes that one day they'd fit again. Or how ecstatic I was when I met a friend I hadn't seen in months, and the first thing he said to me was, Hey, where's the other half of you? And I no longer had to suck in anything when women walked by me in the street. In fact, I was nothing but smiles. And many of them would smile back. What a difference from a few weeks ago. I could go on and on, but in short, I felt like I was given a whole new lease on life. Happy, healthy, confident, not to mention, full of energy and no longer self-conscious of how I looked or what people thought of me. Now, by this point, you're probably asking yourself, how exactly did I do it? Well, it wasn't as hard as you'd imagine. In fact, everything can be boiled down to one simple secret that when followed, leaves you no choice but to shed off every bit of unwanted weight. And I'll share this with you in a moment. But first, let me tell you what I didn't do. And the answer will surprise you. For one, I didn't starve myself. And you shouldn't either. In fact, I don't care how bad you want to lose weight. If you try and fight hunger, you'll always lose. Come to think of it, that's the problem with most diets out there. They force you to get by on scraps so you never really feel full. And eventually, you crack and end up binging, gaining back every pound you lost and then some. Next, I didn't give up any of my favorite treats. Now don't get me wrong, I wasn't stuffing my face with cookies and chocolate cake, but I didn't completely avoid them either. It's not realistic to forgo these guilty pleasures, nor would I want to, and I'm sure you agree. I also didn't go on some fat diet. Sure, fats will make you shed the pounds, sometimes very, very fast. The problem is, most of that weight will be water, which you'll gain back the moment you stop dieting. As for exercise, aside from a little walking, I stopped working out entirely. I lost all that weight without a minute of boring cardio. Now here's a tip you ought to know. The right kind of exercise helps you burn fat, while the wrong kind can cause you to gain it. And cardio just so happens to be that wrong kind. Here's why. Even though it burns some calories, it also makes you hungry. So hungry, in fact, that you end up eating more than you burned off. And over the long run, this can cause you to pack on more pounds than if you didn't work out at all. But please, don't misunderstand me. I'm not downplaying the benefits of exercise. In fact, it has a very important role as far as weight loss is concerned, and we'll get to that later. But for now, just keep in mind that cardio isn't the best way to get in shape. Finally, I didn't use any of those dangerous diet pills. I don't recommend you ever try those things. Sure, some do help a little, but did you know that none of them are regulated by the FDA? Which means you never really know what you're putting in your body. Why risk your health just to lose a few pounds, especially when you can drop much more weight, 
almost as easy as taking a pill and without causing any damage. Sounds crazy, I know, but every word of it is true. In fact, let me share a little secret with you. Your body does not want to be fat. And if you're overweight, it's really not your fault. Don't blame yourself for another minute. Trust me, it's not because you eat too much, lack willpower, or don't exercise enough. Sure, those things do matter, but not nearly as much as you've been led to believe. No, the real reason you don't already have the body you want is because you're eating the wrong foods. Foods that constantly keep you hungry, slow down your metabolism, rob you of your energy, and force you to store fat. And here's the sad part. These are the same foods most experts have been recommending for decades, even though the facts tell a different story. Let me give you an example. We've been on a low-fat kick for over 30 years, ever since the USDA gave us our food pyramid in the late 70s, and yet there's more fat folks around than ever before. Now, on the surface, this may seem a bit strange, but when you dig a little deeper, it makes perfect sense. You see, foods that have been stripped of their natural fat are loaded with sugar and artificial sweeteners. In fact, if they weren't, they taste like cardboard and nobody would buy them. But besides giving food its taste, these additives mess with your body's metabolism. Specifically, they cause you to hoard fat. It's the complete opposite effect you'd expect by swapping the full-fat version of a food for the low-fat one. And yet, that's exactly what happens. Here's another example of a health food that really isn't healthy at all. Are you ready for this? It's a bit of a shocker. Orange juice. How can this be? Well, an orange is one of the most nutritious things you can eat. But when you drink a glass of juice, it's like injecting three, four oranges into your bloodstream in one shot. This spikes your blood sugar through the roof. The end result.